Hi, Huckleberry here. And today we examine the IP header in great detail. So first, let's look at the location of IP in the TCP IP stack. We notice it's in the network layer, which is layer three. Now let's examine the fields in great detail. Version field, which is four bits. Now this defines the version of the IP protocol. Currently, the version you have mostly is version four, that is IPv4, with IPv6 coming in fast. Or is it fast? The version six could totally replace version four. You're right. Probably around the same time that porn is totally eliminated from the internet. Okay, the next field is the header length. Now, header length is the total length of the header in four byte words. Now, four byte words is 32 bits for you noobs. Now, meaning it points to the beginning of the data. With no options, the header length is 20 bytes. So you have a value in the field of five, which is 20 divided by four. Add options and guess what? The value increases. Next field you have is the service type, which is eight bits. Now this was originally TOS to indicate QOS or quality of service, which is desired in networks that offer service precedence. So high precedence traffic got the royal treatment. Just for fun, they changed it to differentiated services, which is still concerned with precedence, but with a different interpretation. But it's still compatible with the original TOS. Uh, next field we have is the total length. This is the total length of the IP datagram in bytes, including the header and the data. Do the math. 16 bits allows for a total length of 65,535. Next field we have is the identification, which is 16 bits also. If the datagram is fragmented, all the fragments will have the same unique value. This way, the receiving end knows that all fragments with the same identification value need to be assembled back into one datagram. Now, hang on for a second, because I'm going to explain fragmentation in just a bit. Next, you have flags. That's going to be a three-bit field. Bit zero is reserved for what nobody knows. Bit one, do not fragment. If it's set to one, then it may not be fragment. So if MTU is too small, the datagram is dropped. Now remember MTU stands for maximum transfer unit, which I'm gonna go over also uh, in just a bit. Um, bit two is more fragments. If set to one, then the datagram is not the last fragment. Okay, so we've kind of glossed over two important terms, which is fragmentation and MTU. So let's discuss them now before proceeding. What's fragmentation? Well, LANs and WANs have a limit on the amount of data that can be carried in a frame at layer two which is usually Ethernet. That limit is called the MTU or the maximum transfer unit. But the datagram prepared at the network layer may be larger than the MTU due to a large amount of data that needs to be sent. In this case, the datagram needs to be fragmented into small units before being passed on to the data link layer. Okay, we go back to the fields, and the next field is fragmentation offset, which is 13 bits. Now, this indicates the relative position 
of each particular fragment when the when the datagram was fragmented. If the it's the offset of the original datagram in eight by units. Note carefully that I said eight by units. Now here's an example. A datagram of 3,200 bytes is split into three fragments. The first fragment carries the first 1,400 bytes. Being the first fragment, its offset will be zero. The second fragment carries the next 1,400 bytes. Its offset is 175. Why? Because the bytes of the prior fragment are divided by eight. Now the last fragment carries the next 800 bytes. Its fragment, its fragment offset is 350. Why? It's the bytes in the two prior fragments, which is 2,800, divided by 8. OK, the next field is the time to live field. Now, time to live prevents the datagram from hanging around endlessly, like unwanted guests, should the routing tables get screwy. Each router it hits decrements the TTL by one. And when TTL get, gets to zero, the datagram is unceremoniously discarded. Now you may be aware that TTL is what makes the trace route command work. Next field is protocol. That's eight bits. Now that's defining the upper layer protocol. So a value of six indicate that, indicates that TCP sits on top of the IP datagram. A value of 17 indicates UDP. One indicates ICMP. There's over 100 more, some important, but most pretty obscure. Next, we have the header checksum. Now, the purpose of the checksum is to detect corruption in transit. For IP, the checksum covers the header, but not the data. The sender uses an algorithm, one's complement arithmetic, if you must know, on the header, and the result is sent with the packet. When the receiver uses the same algorithm over the header, it comes up with its own result. If the results don't match, the packet is rejected like a geek at a senior prom. Next field we have is the source IP address. Now I thought long and hard about how to describe this one. And in a stroke of genius, I came up with the IP address of the source. Oh, it looks like 192.168.1.1. Not this, 68-A3-C4-3F-52-53. Next field we have is the destination IP address, which is also 32 bits. This one should be uh, pretty much self-explanatory after reading my brilliant uh, explanation of the IP source address. And last but not least, you have the options and padding field. Maybe it is least, I don't know. Options don't seem to be used so much anymore. So we can uh, pretty much uh, blow this off for now. But if you do use them, you add enough padding so that the field is exactly 32 bits. Seems like fertile ground for crafted packets, doesn't it? Anyway, this has been Huckleberry. Please mash down that like button before you forget. Goodbye for now.